morning, church. It's nice to be back with you this Sunday morning, the 8th of November. Amen. Yes, good morning. It's so good to have you with us to join us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Yes, it is. So you've got a scripture for us, uh, Jesse. Well, yes. I just want to share something I was reading this morning and it's, um, it's found in Mark chapter 8. I don't know if you remember when Jesus was walking with his, uh, his disciples and He asked them a question. He says to them, who do people say I am? Because apparently He was hearing a few you know, comments around about Jesus, about Himself. And He was just a little bit curious. So He asked them, who do people uh, say that I am? And they replied, well, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But this is the funny, the question that Jesus says to the disciple. He said, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? Because, you know, Jesus knew that people had a lot, a lot of things to say about Him, but He wasn't interested in the majority of people. He really wanted to know what His disciples and His followers thought about Him. And you know, I was thinking about that because sometimes we have an image of Jesus that might not be the uh, the Jesus from the Bible. And that's exactly what today's messages and the next few Sundays messages that Pastor Rocky will bring to the church in relation uh, really who Jesus uh, really is in our lives. So that's food for thought that when you go home or when you've got time for yourself, read through the Scriptures and ask yourself, who is Jesus in my life? Amen. So yes. <laughs> today's message is, will the real Jesus please stand up? And with that, <laughs> let's go to prayer. We're going to pray and open the service in prayer and then we'll go to Amen. our worship team who will lead us in worship this morning. Thank you. Lord, we just thank You. We thank You because the truth is not hidden from us, that yeah. You have gone out of Your way to make sure that we have the Word in, written in black and white, that Amen. we can read it, we can meditate on it, and we can see the glorious and splendour of Your Majesty, creation, and your plan for salvation and Jesus, our loving Saviour. Lord, we just thank You for all that You are, for all that You do. And we thank You for this morning's Word as we open up the Scripture and discover again anew or in more depth exactly who Jesus is. We thank You and give You all glory. In Jesus' Name, Amen. We'll see you later for the Amen. announcements. See you later. Bye.
Well, welcome once again. Um, we thank the Lord for the beautiful musicians that are always leading us in worship. And so now it's time for the announcements that um, Christina will take us through. Thank you, Jess. We've got a couple of announcements today. First of all, we've got a special surprise coming up for Christmas. So stay tuned for that. Uh, as I said, it is a surprise, so you'll find <laughs> out about it later on. That's and it. also this year, we're doing one of those toy drives for the foster children as we did last That's year. Right, Remember, yes. that such a success here here at Jesus is the way. We've been doing that here for years. Many so years. the details are up on the screen if you would like to donate. Last year we bought some gifts for the children. I think we also um, got them some food from McDonald's or something like that if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. So again we're doing that with the foster children. So please uh, feel free to donate and we'll be encouraging those those children again this year. And now it's time for our regular tithes and offerings. And can I just say how grateful we are here at Jesus Is The Way that we pastor a church that is generous in so many ways. And many of you have been so faithful in your giving and giving your tithes. And some of you who are not confident in uh, doing electronic transfer, I know you've kept all your little envelopes with your donations and with your, your tithes and offerings. And we're they're slowly making their way to us. Thank you so Thank much you. for your faithfulness there. So I think we're, I think that's all the announcements and we're ready to go back to the worship and, team. Yes, and I'd just like to add something in regards to the foster care. Um, when you give the donations, don't forget to put in the description oh, yes. uh, foster care so we know that uh, donation, it goes for the foster exactly. children. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. That's, that's right. Okay. <laughs> okay, God bless you. And have a great week. We'll yeah. continue with the worship. Amen.
Church, I want to take you back to a time when uh, things were a little simpler. Now, if you're of my vintage, you might remember the late 60s, early 70s. There was a show on television called To Tell the Truth. There were three contestants that all claiming to be the same person. Let's call him John Smith. And a panel of four that would ask a series of questions to the contestants to try to to, uh, finally identify who the real John Smith was. At the end of the question time, the moderator would ask, will the real John Smith please stand up? And obviously the real one did stand. Now, each person on the panel had made up their own mind of who the real John Smith was and the correct choice was the winner. People today have different opinions of who Jesus is. When asked about what thoughts people have, many reply with similar statements such as, the Jesus I believe in is like this. That's interesting. Opinions vary, but the thing I notice often is that Jesus, the the Jesus that people have in their minds is not necessarily the Jesus of the Bible. And if, if, if that is the case, then where do people get the image of their Jesus? I want to talk, uh, take the time, in fact, I want to take the time to look at the real Jesus. Not the Jesus of the alfrescos and art museums, but the Jesus of the Bible, what he claimed and what he did. I suppose I'm being, uh, I'm, I'm asking the question, will the real Jesus please stand up? And this won't be one of those one-off sermon, sermon events. I wanna take the time to start a series of messages to bring to light the real Jesus. I'm taking my text from James 1 verses 5 to 8 and I want to read this passage of Scripture as an introduction to this series of, of, uh, ser- uh, of messages and to elaborate a little as an introduction from this passage. This is what James 1 verses 5 to 8 says. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask Him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world and they are unstable in everything they do. So James is talking about divided loyalties. Those that don't understand exactly where they are. So here I want to talk a little bit about endurance through wisdom. Now in our text in uh, verses two to four, James speaks about endurance to experience this it's, it, it gives us great joy. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So endurance can bring great joy. Endurance helps the Christian arrive at a point of satisfaction and completeness with themselves and with God. And when we go back to our original text, we see what's needed to endure the challenges of life and this world. For instance, it's wisdom, not just any kind of wisdom, but a godly wisdom. Because the text says, ask God, ask God, for wisdom. We're talking about making the right choices through experience, knowledge and good judgment. Do not waver, it says. That is to go from one type of wisdom to another type of wisdom. Wavering from a belief in God to a belief in something else for guidance. 
That's what James is talking about. A partial belief, and hear me carefully, because a partial belief in God is no belief at all. And I wanna stress this, a partial belief in God is no belief at all because our text continues to say, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. What are the expectations of a divided loyalty? Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord, the passage says. Why? They are unstable in everything they do. This is where some people get stuck and can't receive the spiritual benefits that God wants to share because they want the benefits of what God has to offer, but not willing to take up the responsibilities He has laid out, creating a different Jesus for themselves, one who they have formed in their minds, one, a Jesus of convenience, one who will excuse even bad behaviour, not a Jesus of the Bible. This is another form, in fact, the Jesuses we create in our minds, which are not the Jesus, which might, which, which is not the Jesus of the Bible, is another form of idolatry, trying to recreate God in a different form. Note what 2 Timothy 3, 5 says, they will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Because we're talking about the real Jesus. I wanna look at the real Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, what He said, what He did, why He did what He did, why He was killed, why did He rise from the dead, the implications from, of His resurrected life. He's coming back to take the believers with Him. The real Jesus spoke about love, but He spoke about truth to make us understand the real meaning of love, to shake us into reality. He is not a spiritual replica of a nice fluffy puppy dog, of what we want in our own minds to satisfy ourselves. The Jesus of the Bible spoke of love, but also spoke, uh, 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 showed how love is expressed, set people free in their, spirit, in their spirits and in their minds. He left an example of looking after the poor and dealing with injustice. He gave people hope for the future. So I asked the question, it's the truth that shall set you free. Are we free? Because this is what Jesus said. It's the truth that shall set you free. Which Jesus do we have in our minds? Which Jesus do we have in front of us? There is a freedom in knowing and, and, and uh, following the fountain of, you, of truth that Jesus has before us. Not my truth, not your truth, but His truth. My truth will only cause confusion if it clashes with the truth or His truth. Truth, church, friends, truth cannot be subjective. That is my interpretation of reality. It has to be objective. That is based on reality. What the world needs now is not more money or resources more openness, more acceptance, more tolerance, more justice, more rules, dare I say more love, as important as, as all of these things are, the one thing which will lead to all the above is truth. And the truth is Jesus. How will we find or discover this truth? Stay with me, friends, stay with me, church, over the next few weeks as I open the pages of Jesus' 33 year life on this earth with humanity, and we will discover His message, His purpose, His achievements, His promises, and we will discover 
who the real Jesus is as we ask the question, will the real Jesus please stand up? Because that will be the Jesus of the Bible. Pray with me right now. Father, we know that You have ordained for Your Son to come to earth and to minister to, to humanity. And Lord, we are so desirous into, into having a good understanding of who Jesus really is. Lord, we don't wanna be distracted by what the world says or what individuals say, but we wanna return back to Your Book, Your Word and discover the real Jesus. So I pray, Lord God, that this will be our desire and all those that are viewing right now, to open up their hearts as they follow these series of messages with us to know who the real Jesus is. Can we say this and thank you? Amen and amen. God bless you, church. Have another great week.